So there used to be a saying that if the knife is over one ounce per inch of blade length, so three inch blade length would equal three ounces. If it's over that, then it's considered heavy, which I don't agree with. And the reason why is because the longer your knife gets, the bigger your knife gets, the, the less likely you're gonna be able to hold to that standard. And then when you start adding certain materials, titanium, you know, and things like that, it's obviously going to be heavier and heavier. So there is still the possibilities of being lightweight and not holding to the standard of one ounce per inch. But for actual lightweight knives go, I would say that, that that's a decent standard as far as lightweight knives go, as long as it's 3.5 inches or lower. If you go any over, if you go over 3.5 inches, you're going to go over and wait. As soon as you get to 3.5 inches, you're going to go over and wait for the most part. So, let's check out the knives we have for today. So, starting it off, we have the Wii Banter. The Wii Banter is a little compact spear point blade, an S35VN. Comes in different handle materials. This one is the micarta one, but it does come in carbon fiber and G10 and things like that. And it's relatively lightweight at 2.6 ounces for a 2.75 inch blade. So nearly a three inch blade, 2.6 ounces. Now you could go with the Baby Banter, which is even smaller, but it's a lot smaller. And that's about 2.6 zero two ounces so basically two ounces for a 2.3 inch blade so it is much much smaller but as far as the regular banter goes the wee banter you're getting a, a lot here because no it's nothing extravagant no it's nothing insane and you know it's not like something super unique or anything like that but what it is it's a compact extremely useful edc knife that you can get a full grip on even though it has such a small handle because it's it's thick and wide so it actually gives you a very comfortable grip so it's a knife that you can kind of use like a big knife even though it is a small knife and you're not going to be held down in the pockets by the weight the next one is the Civivi Altus 3.1 ounces for a three inch blade now this one has unlocked composite my, um, carbon fiber scales on it so i don't have the actual uh, g10 scales that originally came with but the g10 scales are 3.1 ounces now I love these unlocked composite scales. I actually called them something else in another video. You guys corrected me and I appreciate that. Mine has a titanium mill pocket clip and like I said, in the scales. So mine's a little bit different, but the Altus is an amazing knife. It's super duper snappy. Like it is one of the better uh, thumb stud action button lock knives. Super snappy. It's a great size. The thumb stud lands in a great location for the thumb flick. The button works great. Mine's been super duper solid. Nitro V steel and Nitro V steel is an amazing steel. Holds a really good edge. Super tough. Nice and stainless and it takes a really fine edge. But yeah, the Civivi Altus is an absolute banger of a lightweight knife. Now, Going down a little bit in size, we have the Civivi Mini Praxis. The Civivi Mini Praxis is 2.7 ounces for a three inch blade. So, you know, it, it's not the biggest knife. It's, it's very small and sleek, and that's why the weight is so little on this thing. But for $30, $30, you can get this knife. D2 steel and G10 scales, very snappy action, beautiful spear point blade. It's a blade shape that's gonna be very, very functional for you, but it's not gonna take up a bunch of room in your pocket. And it's gonna be nice and lightweight. Next is the Devo Pony Stout. Now, I do not know the exact weight on this. I was trying to find it, I couldn't find it, but it's a lightweight knife. It's a small compact knife, micarta scales. It does have steel liner lock um, that is in set, but it's still, it's a very lightweight knife. It's got a nice hollow ground sheep's foot blade. This blade shape, actually the whole knife, this is such a useful knife, and even though I absolutely love my full size D, my full size stout, I love that knife. I almost feel like this knife was originally supposed to come in this size because when you get it in hand and you realize not only how good the action is, but how comfortable it is in the hand and just how functional it is as a little compact knife, it blows you away how useful this knife is. I I definitely recommend it and it's super affordable. So you're going to be able to find it at 
uh, White Mountain Knives, um, May 11th at 12 o'clock Eastern. So that's uh, for me right now, that's tomorrow. So May 11th at noon Eastern time at White Mountain Knives. And it's I, it's gonna be for a great price. It's under $100. So, so I think the weight of the Pony Stout is 3.3 ounces, which is slightly over the ounce per inch, but are you really gonna feel 0.3 of an ounce? I mean, I doubt that. So as far as the knife goes, amazing knife and then when you get to the weight it does have a very lightweight feeling and it's going to be super compact and easy to carry now let's get to the next one the next one is the benchmade mini griptilian one of my all-time favorite lightweight knives as far as being a tough little compact knife it's something that you know i've had many different griptilians from the big ones to the small ones different small ones and i, I love them they, they're very fidgety, very snappy, but they're great, super solid knives that just hold up, man. Like my big one that I've, I've had for a long time and it just keeps on pushing no matter what I throw at it. And I love that. 2.5 ounces on the mini for a, for a 2.9 inch blade. So 2.5 ounces for a 2.9 inch blade. That's pretty good for what you're getting because it is a robust blade. So you do have to put in, there is little factors that always play a part in the, the weight of a knife. Um, as far as the big one goes, 3.8 ounces for a 3.5 inch blade. So you're gonna step it up. And like we said, you know, once you get over three inches, you know, three, especially when you get close to 3.5 inches, it's difficult to keep that weight. But this would still be considered a lightweight full-size knife as far as the big griptilian goes. S30V steel um, comes in FRN scales. Now they do have the G10 ones. Uh, so, you know, and then there's tons of aftermarket scales for these. So you can basically make these your own because they've been around for so long and they're super reliable, super tough knives. Now the next one, while we're with Benchmade, let's talk about the Benchmade bailout. Now, I do not own one of these, but I have got to give the bailout credit and I'm gonna own one. I will buy one. I'm probably gonna buy one at Blaze Show because I've always wanted one and I've gotten to handle them uh, multiple times and they're so lightweight. They, they, it doesn't make sense to how the weight is, when, especially when you consider the, the, the size of it. 2.7 ounces for basically a 3.5 inch blade, 3.4 ounces. So it's a Tanto. It comes in different steels from M4, I think 3V. Um, I think they have a crew wear one. So there's different versions, lots of different versions of this and super fidgety. It's got the access lock. So, you know, you know, that's a robust lock. And especially with the, the, um, the aluminum scales, it's going to be a little bit more solid. Now they do have a more lighter version in FRN scales at 2.05 ounces, 2.05 ounces. So this is with a, for a three, 3.3 inch blade. That's super lightweight. I personally would go with the aluminum one because I don't think you're going to feel that little tiny bit of weight. But yeah, a near a 3.5 inch blade at under three ounces um, in weight. So, and then it's super robust, super tough, super strong, super thin geometry. So the cutting geometry is great. There's a lot of great qualities to, to this knife and it's USA made. So all bench are USA made. So we applaud them for that. And they have an amazing warranty. So if you have any issues, they will deal with it. Um, so yeah, this is a great example of a lightweight full-size knife. Next, we have the Vosteed Bellamy. The Vosteed Bellamy is 2.9 ounces for a 3.4 inch blade. So for the length and the size, it is super duper lightweight. It comes with like this rich light or maybe it's micarta scales. It's kind of like a burlap micarta with a milled pattern in it. They also had carbon fiber versions as well, but it's a knife that has multiple forms of deployment. You have the fuller, you have the top flipper, the front flipper, then you also have the back flipper. You So you have tons of opening deployments. It's super lightweight because it does have a nice deep hollow ground clip point blade. So it's very slicey, very useful, nice and ergonomic and great access to lock bar, reversible deep carry clip. So lots of great features on this knife and it's in 154 CM steel. So a fantastic mid-grade steel. So all in all, the Bellamy is a, a great, 
it's a great lightweight compact knife, but that's also long. So it's not like, it's not super small. It would be considered a full size knife, but it's a super lightweight full size knife. Next is the Spyderco Kapara made in Taiwan. Now this is another one we're going up in size. So you gotta understand, we're probably not gonna be able to stay under that ounce per inch, 3.4 ounces for a 3.6 inch blade. So we're right there on the line, right there on the line. So to me, that's great. If you can get something at 3.5 inches or more and still stay in the ounce per inch, that's really good. That's lightweight. Now, carbon fiber is incredibly tough, incredibly tough. Mine has aftermarket uh, rips, rips garage scales, uh, my car scales, but the Capara the, the scales that come on it are so nice. It's like some of the best carbon fiber and they're super smooth, super lightweight, super, super tough. I can't tell you how strong carbon fiber is. Carbon fiber is so damn strong. And then it has a reversible deep carry wire clip. It has the, the compression lock, so nice strong locking system. It has a blade shape that is, and this is one thing with Spyderco's, man. Spyderco knocks out of the park with their blade shapes as far as EDC goes because the Kapara's blade shape is such a useful shape. Um, not only is the handle very ergonomic and very comfortable and allows you to get up nice and tight to the, to the edge with your grip, the blade shape just it the blade shape and the handles complement each other so well it is an extremely useful design next is the hogue deca we couldn't talk about lightweight knives without the hogue deca 2.1 ounces for a 3.25 inch blade now that's for the frn version i have the original goat scales which does Increase the weight a little bit, but not by much. I believe it's 2.6 ounces with the aluminum scales, which if you think about it, to get like five times the robustness for, you know, like a half ounce, nice, right? That, that's awesome. So I'm very, very happy with the original goat scales. Not only do they keep it super duper lightweight, but they increase the toughness like tenfold. Super snappy, great action, great access lock style action or crossbar lock, I should say. Um, now this one, the one I have is the Sheep's Foot Warncliffe one that has a dual grind, but it does also come in a clip point version. Uh, very ergonomic, great size. It's like a perfect size EDC knife for most people. So if you don't like huge knives, it's great. And if you don't like small knives, it's great. It's right there in that medium range. Um, very ergonomic, nice and slicey. Their magnet cut steel is doing really good now. They increased their HRC to 63 to 64 HRC, which we already know that's amazing. So, um, and shout out to Hogue for doing that. USA made, it's almost, it's, it's one of the better USA made knives, especially for the price. So definitely, I definitely recommend that. The last two, the Spyderco Chaparral. Now I know we're going down smaller right now. The Chaparral is two ounces for nearly a three inch blade. It's 2.8 inch blade. So not, not a big blade, not a big knife, but it's very slim, very, very lightweight. You almost can't even feel it. It's so light. Um, so when you're carrying it, you can carry this in the fifth pocket. You can carry it in your regular pocket. It does have a fantastic slow rolling thumb hole action. However, I can reverse flick mine pretty good. You can close it one handed with this back lock because they have the little forward finger choil that you can let drop and hit your finger. Um, but the geometry is where this one shines and this is why this thing is so lightweight. It's like, I, I forget, let me just measure it really quick. It's like 87 thousandths blade stock thickness. It is so, so thin. 74, 74 on mine. Mine is 74 thousandths blade stock thickness. And then behind the edge thickness is, on my example, 16 thousand, 16 thousand. So not only does it is it super lightweight, but this thing is mega, mega slicey, mega slicey. And back locks are pretty strong and they kind of last forever. So awesome, awesome knife. If you like little compact knives, try out the Capara. Now the next one, I think, possibly beats the Capara. And I know some people don't like a little one little feature on this knife, but I urge people to look past it because it is that good. The Civivi 
cubit. The CVV cubit is 2.5 ounces, 2.5 ounces for a three inch blade. It's like 2.97, so it's almost three inches, but it's a three inch blade. So aluminum scales, there's no inlays inside. So it's solid, thick, robust aluminum scales. There's no micro milling, no milling on the inside. So they are robust. You know, they, they don't need the liners. Um, and it's super duper lightweight. But here's where the reason why it's so, so lightweight. The blade stock thickness on this super duper slicey knife is 86 thousandths at the thickest point, right? They say it's 100 thousandths on, on the site. It's 86 thousandths on mine. But when you get to the cutting path, because that's in the thickest portion, the portion where you're not gonna be cutting. When you get up here to where you actually cut, 70 thousandths and it even goes lower the, the more you go to the tip so 70 thousandths blade stock thickness and minus nine thousandths behind the edge nine thousandths behind the edge this thing is so lightweight so damn slicey then you have this amazing thumb flicking action and reverse flicking action from the button lock. So the button lock works great. I did see one person in the community, theirs failed. I have no doubt that Civivi won't uh, replace it or fix it or wherever he got it from. I've tested mine over and over, mine's super solid. I have yet to have seen a Civivi button lock that fails. So I do think that that's just a lemon. Um, I'm not saying we're not gonna see it again or anything like that, things do happen, but I've tested a lot of them. And so far, all my Civivis have really held up. Now. The feature that people don't really like about it is that it has this little groove right there. Now, I don't know if it was intended to be a bottle opener, but it works as a bottle opener. I think it's cool. I don't think there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't catch on anything. Everybody was acting like it's going to catch on stuff and things. It doesn't catch on anything. It's super lightweight, um, fantastic, super slicey. Uh, great blade shape knife, 14C 28M blade steel. You already know, I don't think I need to go into it. We love that blade steel here. We love that blade steel. Now, mine happens to be the Damascus version, which they do some of the best work on their Damascus. So I'm gonna say if you want a Damascus knife, um, I would recommend staying away from most companies' Damascus, but Civivi is doing a phenomenal job. There's a few other companies that use the same steel, so, you know, and they do a good job with it too, but Civivi does a really good job with their Damascus. So if you want a good quality Damascus, check out one of Civivi's knives. And this Civivi Cubit is like 66 bucks. 66 bucks for 14C aluminum scale super snappy super light super effective too man this thing is it's a beast i've been carrying the heck out of it inset deep carry clip that is reversible ta hardware all the way around yeah this one's hard to beat for a lightweight knife i gotta say it, it, it is a heavy hitter as far as lightweight knives go now i didn't want this video to go on for an hour but i could have mentioned so many other lightweight knives the benchmade bug outs the spyderco delicas um the spyderco salt series or even maybe the spyderco manix lightweight that is like the most robust lightweight knife i've ever tried not only is it like incredibly incredibly light but it feels so solid it feels like it'll last a lifetime like it's super duper tough for such a lightweight knife so there is many knives i could sit here and go on and on about anyways that is the end of the video until next time Peace.